The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good day, everybody, and thanks so time for thanks a lot for taking time out of your day to join me as I share some benefits of beneficial mushrooms with you. My name is Richard Sividanis. I'm a member of the education team for Fungi Perfecti and Host Defense Products. Today, I'm going to be exploring, uh, you know, how mushrooms can benefit both your immunity and your longevity in this brief conversation. As we progress through the, the conversation, questions may come up for you, and I do hope that they do. So I'm going to ask that you type your questions right into the Facebook Live uh, panel there, and then we're going to answer the questions at the end of the, of the conversation here, just to, so that we have an opportunity to move through the information quickly. It's going to take about 40 minutes to get through the PowerPoint that we have set up for you here. So I appreciate that. And again, remember, you can type your question in at any time and we'll get to the answers at the end. So as a gentle reminder before we really get started, um, you know, fungi perfecti and host defense does not diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. If you have a health concern, please work with an integrative healthcare practitioner or a healthcare, healthcare practitioner of your choice. But before we really get going, I like to always start out with some fun facts about mushrooms. So mushrooms have been used cross-culturally and on every habitable content of the planet since long before the written words. So we're not just talking centuries here, but for thousands of years, they can certainly be considered an original functional food. Reishi, that's what you're seeing being weighed there on that image. The reishi mushroom has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for over 2,000 years and was nicknamed the mushroom of immortality by these early users. So more than just being nourishing and supportive, some beneficial mushroom species, even a number of them that we grow for our products, they're just delicious in my opinion. Maitake, lion's mane, shiitake, they're all, all very tasty and nutritious. Uh, you know, mushrooms, they contain protein. They're a great nutritional source of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants like selenium and ergothionine, and they contain many other micronutrients. So not only have mushrooms inspired humans in the gastronomic sense, so to speak, but they also have deeply inspired humanity's creativity. Mushrooms can be found depicted in ancient archaic art from all over the world, like this cave painting that dates back over 6,000 years. This cave painting came from a place called Tassili in Azure, which is in the Sahara Desert in the southeast of Algiers. And the image resembles a dancing shamanic figure of sorts that's covered in mushrooms and holding mushrooms and is adorned with what appears to be some type of hybrid bee deer mask or headdress. Mushrooms have been used by the early, early humans as fire starters, as fire carriers. They were the punk that was used in the earliest rifles. Uh, they've been used as clothing. Uh, just like this image of that hat that's made from an amadou polypore mushroom fruit body. Uh, and of course, they've been used for nutritional support for health and longevity. Another interesting fun fact is that we share about 55% of our DNA with mushrooms, while we only share about 15% of our DNA with plants. Surprising, right? So like many of us know how great herbs can be to help support our health, just imagine what the therapeutic potential is with beneficial mushrooms. Structurally, mushrooms and plants have similar parts, but their functions are radically different. Plants have roots where they passively absorb nutrients. Mushrooms have a root-like structure. It's called mycelium, but the function of mycelium is completely different from plant roots. And in fact, the mycelium is where mushrooms are more similar to animals because the mycelium carries out all of the day-to-day -day life functions of the mushroom organism. Like animals, uh, fungi breathe in oxygen and they exhale carbon dioxide and they digest their nutrients using enzymes. So animals you know, find food in the world and put it inside their bodies where it's digested and absorbed, while fungi have a different strategy. They excrete their enzymes into the environment, they digest the world where it is, and then absorb it into their bodies. And the mushroom mycelium also makes immune complexes to help defend the mushroom organism from pathogens that they encounter in the soil. This is very similar to our own immune system. 
And then the mushroom mycelium also makes what's known as quorum sensing compounds. And this, this allows the mushrooms to sense and adapt to their ever-changing environment, much like our sensory organs help us. So these similarities and differences of mushrooms are what make them particularly helpful as a therapeutic agent. And we can capture and conserve many of these compounds from the mushroom mycelium and use them for our health and longevity. So host defense is part of the changing paradigm around the concept of what is considered a healthy immune system, right? Shifting from this concept of immune stimulation to immune modulation. The immune system is complex and it has many components. And an analogy to consider is thinking about the immune system like a symphony orchestra. We wouldn't want all the instruments playing at full volume at the same time without a score or any direction. That would sound pretty horrible. And from an immune perspective, the same is true. We don't want our immune system cells all working at full capacity at the same time without any direction. And neither do we want them not working at all. So for the average person, balancing the immune system is a far more appropriate end goal as compared to mere immune stimulation. And this goes for even when we're fighting infections. If we stimulate the immune system too much, the immune cells can send immune signaling molecules cascading throughout our bodies. And many of these signaling molecules are inflammatory in nature. They're what actually make us feel worse when we're sick, even though they're at the same time making our immune cells work harder. So helping the immune system work strongly without over-responding is critical. And getting the immune system into what we like to call the balanced Goldilocks zone, you know, not too much, not too little, but just right, that's the desired outcome that most people want. So the immune system's purpose is to defend us against pathogens, cell mutations, and support the body's tissue healing capabilities when it becomes injured. And uh, by looking at this chart, as you can see, our immune system, it has a lot of steps, right? And it does a really big job. So our immune system, it, uh, it upregulates by starting an inflammatory response. And you can see that in that green arrow. Get myself my pen here to help out a little bit. Um, so this green arrow right here, okay, is this is the start and the beginning of the inflammatory response. But the immune system also has the job of cleaning up and calming down after our immune system has become activated. So by its very nature, our immune response creates a process of inflammation when it is engaged. So inflammation is in fact a very normal and incredibly critical aspect of any healing process. And that's indicated by that green star. Anytime you have injury, Anytime you have an infection, the beginning of the immune engagement starts with inflammation. Now, over on the right-hand side of this graph, the orange star over here, right in this area here, the orange star is that the part of the immune system when we actually start to feel sick, when we want to stay in bed and rest, right? And then after the inflammatory response and the engagement of our immune system, it then triggers a series of these modulatory processes, and those are indicated by the purple star on the graph. And it shows how our immune system has an immune modulating process after the stages of immune engagement. So modulation reduces inflammation and brings the immune system back into a state of alert, watchful waiting. There are definite stages, and like many processes in our body, our immune response has a feedback loop. So in order for our bodies to thrive, we need to be able to turn on and then turn off this response rapidly. We want a flexible, strong, and nimble immune system. We don't want an immune system that reacts or consistently upregulates to everything. That is not ideal. Our immune system must respond to injury and threats when needed, and then it must quickly return back to that watchful waiting state. The ability to perform this shift to shift rapidly, it's really important in order to reduce potentially negative impacts on our healthy tissues. So our immune cells, they communicate with each other and our bodies using cell signaling molecules that are called cytokines and chemokines. 
These signaling molecules direct our immune cells and other body cells to function in a number of different ways. These cytokine signaling molecules, they're what create many of the physical sensations that we experience during injury or illness. However, without them, we would not be able to mount an immune response to actually protect and heal our bodies. Unfortunately, the cytokines and chemokines can also become dysregulated and pathological in things like long-term chronic inflammation, trauma, sepsis, even hemorrhagic stroke. The oversecretion of these signaling molecules, the cytokines, it can trigger a dangerous syndrome known as a cytokine storm. Now, you may have heard about this in the news lately. Right? Cytokine storms are suspected to be the main cause of death in the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. Cytokines are vital to our immune health, but they also create many of those sickness feelings that we experience. So there's a lot of information on this slide. Um, I just wanna break it down a little bit for you before we get started. And I wanna bring your attention particularly to what's in red, okay? So under acute phase immune response, we're looking at what's known as IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha, right? And you'll notice here an allergic or parasite reactivity, IL-6 and TNF-alpha, and also in autoimmune response, okay? These keep coming up, IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha. And then I also want to draw your attention to the physical impact of those cyto cytokines, as well as the emotional impact of them, okay? So it's true that when our immune system is working, we really feel it. And interestingly, when the immune system is addressing different issues, it sends out specific cytokines. Now these cytokine profiles are what create the different physical and emotional experiences that we have when different branches of the immune response are engaged. So you'll notice that there's an overlap of those messenger molecules that are released as each branch is activated. However, there are also differences. So in acute phase infection, that's when you're doing like identification of bacterial or viral cells that engages the immune system. And that's a way that we're all pretty quite familiar with, I would imagine. That's when you're getting achy, you get lethargic, your body temperature increases. With allergic or parasite reactivity, we have a tendency to get agitated, itchy, irritated, and we experience localized heat and redness. And then in autoimmunity, the trigger is our own tissues. And here, many people feel isolative, anxious, agitated, they can feel swollen. What most people don't realize is that specific cytokines that are associated with specific immune response, they trigger physical feelings and emotions. So IL-1, which is a cytokine, that IL-1 is short for interleukin-1, that is associated with acute phase effect infection, and it's also correlated to depression which is how many of us feel when we start to get sick, right? You start feeling run down, tired, lethargic. You can even feel sad. The cytokine IL-6 or interleukin-6, this is a cytokine that triggers fever, and it's also correlated with feelings of anxiety. TNF-alpha, which is short for tumor necrosis factor alpha, that's associated with increased inflammatory responses and it elicits feelings of agitation, anger, or hostility. So we can feel the difference between these experiences, and it's because they're, they're different signals that are being sent by our cells within our body and also in varying amounts. So another interesting consideration is the role that stress has on immune functioning. Stress can trigger the release of the cytokines IL-1, TNF, and IL-6. And when stress triggers the immune system's release of these cytokines, that could be another trigger of increased immune signaling that could become a defining factor in long-standing health conditions. So in order to understand some of the research, we're gonna take a look uh, um, you know, just for a moment at this very simplified graph of some of our immune system cells. So it's broken into two parts. There's the innate immune cells. Those are ready to go from the instant they become stimulated. Right? We're all born with innate immunity. Our acquired or adaptive immune cells, 
Those need more instruction and can take some time to actually get up and running. This portion of our immunity, it learns as we age. So in the innate immune response in the top there, you're gonna see uh, it's called macrophage. Macrophages tend to seek out and destroy pathogens like bacteria and viruses. You can think of these as the Pac-Mans of the immune system because they are literally gobbling up pathogens and other foreign debris that is found in our body tissues. Our natural killer cells and natural killer T cells, as well as other T cells, they're looking for mutations in our own cells, as well as foreign proteins that alert the immune system to a pathogen like a bacteria or a virus. The B cells in the adaptive immune response, those also are participating in uh, looking for foreign proteins of bacteria and viruses, but B cells also house our memory cells that can live for decades in our acquired immune system. Down on the bottom left of the innate immune side of the, of the graph, there's three cells that are referred to as granulocytes. Now granulocytes release highly inflammatory compounds like histamine in response to parasites, but also in response to allergic triggers. So if someone has a mild allergy, the typical immune response to an allergen is overproduction of mucus, right? That's when you start getting like a stuffy nose. But the response can also be much more serious than that as with uh, anaphylaxis. So even though uh, they cause uncomfortable allergic feelings, these granulocytes are involved in allergic reactivity if they're dysregulated, and then they are also necessary for our health, of course, since parasites have been a major factor in human health and existence. And in many places in the world, parasites continue to have a profound impact upon people's health and vitality. So all of these different types of immune cells, they all play critical roles in our immune system. Therefore, again, maintaining that balanced Goldilocks zone of immune functioning is critical for well-being and longevity. So the research on host defense mushrooms suggests that they can be the perfect conductor for the symphony of our immune response. This first peer-reviewed journal article from the research that was carried out by a laboratory called Natural Immune Systems, it used host defense turkey tail and fermented rice products. This paper was published in 2019 and it can be downloaded for free in full online from the BMC Complementary and Alternative Medicine Journal. So the turkey tail mushroom mycelium, it has distinctly different biological and immune modulating properties than its fermented substrate. The mycelium was very potent in terms of triggering immune cell activation without engaging the granulocyte cells. And granulocytes, again, are the ones that are involved in allergies. The fermented rice substrate was very active in terms of immune modulation. So the results suggest that overall beneficial effects are associated with both the mycelium itself and the highly bioactive fermented substrate. The mechanisms associated with the fermented rice activity, that can help keep the immune system in that balanced Goldilocks zone. So this second study, also originating from the Natural Immune Systems Laboratories, this was published earlier in this, this year, in 2020. And this research piece focused specifically on my community. That's Host Defense's 17 mushroom flagship formula. So the research describes the complex immune response that's elicited by the mycelium and the fermented rice. The research also demonstrated both a strong engagement of immune cell activity and a strong immune system resolution with the release of various cytokines and growth factors that promote clearance and eventual resolution of the immune response. So that term host defense that we use to describe our brand, that's originally associated with our innate immune response. So this response that was outlined earlier in the stages of the immune engagement graph, it's responsible for both inflammation that engages the immune system and also with modulation, where the immune system is resolving itself. So the mycelium and the fermented organic brown rice together, it shows us that modulation of the immune response can have a powerful impact on long-term health and vitality. When host defense started in the supplement retail arena over 10 years ago, there were not a lot of mushroom companies around at the time. 
now there are several companies that are specializing in mushroom production and there are many others that have mushroom products or they have products that contain mushrooms but host defense is still unique in this ever expanding niche part of the retail market you know an integral aspect of our line is attributed to the great lengths that we take to ensure that our products are safe and effective we adhere to cgmp procedures that stands for Certified Good Manufacturing Practices. We utilize independent laboratories that have internationally recognized and valid testing methods where we test for identification, composition, purity, and strength. We validate the authenticity of our mushroom species by both genetic and biochemical assays. We test our products for pesticides, for industrial compounds, heavy metals, as well as microbiological contaminations. We really wanna make sure that our products are safe and effective. We grow our own products in the beautiful state of Washington that's located on the lower Olympic Peninsula. We have certified organic status as both mushroom growers and manufacturers and have been for over 20 years. We use the mushroom mycelium, the fermented substrate that the mycelium grows in and the adult fruit bodies of some species in our products. We're a vertically integrated business and we are what's known as beyond carbon neutral. We currently offset over 10 times the amount of carbon that we emit by supporting global initiatives to help reduce carbon. And then we donate monies towards research on microremediation, microfiltration, and other subjects that are associated with mycelium and enhancing planetary health. So host defense is unique, right? Now we're using, as I mentioned, all parts of the mushroom. We use the mycelium, the fermented substrate, and the adult fruit body. So the mycelium is a network of these fungal filaments. It's only a one cell wall thick, as you can see in that scanning electron microscope image on the left under the magnifying glass. And then here you can also see a network of mycelium in the middle there with the fermented organic rice substrate. Does that look like anything else you may have seen in your grocery or health food stores? Yeah, right, it looks like tempeh, right? And tempeh is actually another nutritious food that is fermented by a fungus. And on the right-hand side, that's an adult fruit body. That fruit body is the lion's mane. Um, and you can see it's growing on wood chips in that picture. And the mycelia is growing into the wood chips. But even wood chips that are digested by mycelium is not an edible substance for humans. And this is the reason why we use organic rice as the growth medium for the mycelium. All aspects of the mushroom are really rich in health promoting constituents. And Host Defense recognizes this fact by incorporating all parts of the mushroom into our products. So we grow the mycelium on rice, and we have had over the years some pushback about this. However, we have some really great reasoning for using rice as our growth medium. Rice is an excellent food source for both humans and mushroom mycelium. Uh, rice is naturally gluten free, right? So it's very well tolerated by almost all people. Mycelium cultures and ferments the rice by secreting enzymes that break down the rice fiber and starch, and that makes the nutrients more readily absorbable to our body. And then the mycelium digests and converts the rice starches into various highly nutritive compounds, including one that's called arabinoxylanes. And arabinoxylanes are immune supporting polysaccharides. So rice allows for the harvesting of both the mycelium and the culture metabolites that are storehouses of supportive compounds like prebiotics, enzymes, as well as the mushroom's immune complexes. All these precious compounds would be lost when growing mycelium on wood because we cannot eat wood, right? Not, eat, not even wood that's fermented. So research on mushroom mycelium is ongoing and we continue to learn more and more every year. And host defense is part of that scientific process. We have our own dedicated research team that studies our products and creates manuscripts for publication in peer reviewed journals. So we're on the leading edge in not just the supplement industry, but in mycology as well. So we've just covered a lot of background information, right? Now we're gonna take a little bit of time and figure out which product might be best for you. Uh, each beneficial mushroom in the host defense line can support a strong and balanced immune response. I just wanna draw your attention to the center of this chart here. You know, we're not listing all of the beneficial mushrooms we use, but we're, we're, we're listing some of the big players. 
no matter which beneficial mushroom you use, they all help to improve our immune response. So each mushroom product, it can also support two, three, or more systems of your body at once. This can be really helpful for people who don't wanna take a lot of different supplements or maybe somebody who's shopping with financial restrictions. If you take a little bit of time to learn about the mushrooms, you can choose one of them as a product instead of two or three other supplements to help support your health. So we're gonna review some of the host defense mushroom products and see if we can find a mushroom species or formula that, that would be best for you. So starting off in digestive health, right? Now there are several mushrooms that can support functioning in the digestive tract. And in some ethnobotanical traditions, there's a belief that both health and illness begin within our intestines. Our digestive system is incredibly complex and there are a number of ways that we can impact it. But from a mushroom perspective, we're gonna take into consideration our microbiome, as well as the cells that line our intestinal tract and the gut associated immune tissue. So reishi, turkey tail, chaga, and lion's mane have each been studied for their potential as prebiotics. And each of these mushrooms has shown activity that either stabilizes the microbiome or actually increases the density of probiotic microflora species in the lactobacilli and bifidobacteria uh, genre. So these mushrooms can also support the gut associated immune tissue. They can modulate our immunity so that our immune cells function strongly, yet in a balanced manner. And there are also other added benefits that these mushrooms can provide that we haven't mentioned yet, right? So the reishi mushroom, it supports epithelial cell regeneration while stabilizing the genetics of the epithelial cells. And epithelial cells are the type of cells that line our intestinal tract. Chaga mushroom has a strong antioxidant activity that protects and stabilizes intestinal cell DNA. And lion's mane also supports intestinal tissue and supports regenerative activity. So some of the products are available in powder, which are excellent if you're using larger serving sizes of like three grams a day or more. So if you're using these mushrooms as a prebiotic, it's best to take it alongside of your probiotic in order to help to remodel your gut microbiome. For upper respiratory and seasonal support, we have a product we call Breathe. So the immune system is designed, right, to protect us from both external and internal assaults. And optimally for us, the substances that our immune system actually recognizes as assault worthy are things like pathogens, parasites, or cell mutations. Unfortunately, our immune systems can become overzealous in their effort to protect us. And sometimes our immune system mistakenly identifies neutral substances, you know, things like pollen or animal dander, as harmful or assault worthy, right? And this type of immune dysregulation, it actually seems to be on the rise in these last number of years. So helping the immune system to reduce its overactive response, it can be really helpful when the neutral substances are common everyday things like pollen, animal dander, dust mites. So breathe is a three mushroom formula, two of which we've already reviewed uh, for a moment in the digestive support, right? This formula supports healthy respiratory function and a balanced immune response. Reishi is a systemic immune modulator. Chaga supports the balanced immune response of the cells that line the interior surface of our lungs, which are the same types of cells that line our intestines and our skin. It's all the same tissue type, epithelial cells are what create and produce our barrier tissues. The cordyceps mushroom helps to reduce hyperreactive airways, so it helps to increase the volume of air that a person can inhale. And cordyceps also increases the amount of oxygen that we can take into our systems. So altogether, these three mushrooms, they help to support graceful breathing. Uh, we have breathe in a liquid extract. This is very rapid in its response. It's often experienced within like two to 10 minutes after a serving. The capsules of Breathe can be used daily to help maintain a balanced immune response uh, in the respiratory system. So a great mushroom that provides gut brain support is the lion's mane mushroom, right? We previously mentioned lion's mane as one of those mushrooms that's beneficial in the digestive tract. However, there is more to lion's mane than just gut support, right? There's gaining evidence uh, in the scientific literature that mood concerns are more gut and immune related 
as opposed to just concentrations of neurotransmitters in our brains. An interesting fact is that approximately 90% of the body's serotonin is manufactured in the intestinal tract with the help of our microbiome. Yet there's also a very interesting cytokine profile that's associated with many mood concerns. So it may be that supporting a balanced immune response, shifting our intestinal microbiome could have a really profound impact upon supporting a balanced mood. Lion's Mane also has quite a bit of research on its support of nerve growth factor and brain-derived neurotrophic factor. These are both messengers that direct our body's stem cells to differentiate into neurological tissues, as well as they signal our nerve cells to repair and regenerate themselves. And then Lion Mane research also shows support for memory, mental clarity, and cognitive functioning. And this is especially true with aging adults. And just to reinforce the earlier paradigm shift, Lion's Mane research shows support for mood and sleep that don't seem to be directly connected to neurotransmitter levels. So we have Lion's Mane in capsules, that's again, ideal for one to two grams serving size a day. The powders are a great option for larger serving sizes. And then the liquids are a nice option for those who are either having difficulties swallowing capsules or want a quicker result from the product. So if you need muscle and energy support, our Cordici product is definitely for you. So Cordici is an equal parts cordyceps and reishi, the pairing of two uh, mushroom species together right here. And in traditional Chinese medicine, this is called a dui yao. Dui yao means it's a perfect pairing of two substances. So cordyceps and reishi together, they support immune activation and balance. They support lung function, oxygenation, systemic modulation of our immune response, and both immediate and day-long energy, as well as helping to support athletic performance. So when people have long-term low energy issues, the last thing most folks are thinking about is their immune response. However, when we look at how the immune cell signaling molecules, those cytokines impact us, that one in particular, IL-1, that, that cytokine can make us feel lethargic and tired and apathetic. So cordyceps and reishi, along with directly supporting energy by a number of mechanisms, they can also strongly balance the immune response. And not only does cordyceps and reishi engage innate and acquired immune cells, they also engage the modulatory aspects of the immune response, especially a cytokine that's called IL-10. And IL-10 reduces our expression of IL-1, which again is that cytokine that's associated with lethargy and apathy, or what we call our sickness feelings, right? So a great mushroom for metabolic support is maitake. Maitake has been used for years to support the immune system response. And maitake also supports blood glucose levels already within the normal range. Interestingly, one of the mechanisms that's associated with insulin sensitivity involves the immune cell, the macrophages, and their release of inflammatory cytokines. So supporting a balanced immune response may support balanced insulin receptor sensitivity. Our host defense turkey tail, this has been studied uh, by Bastyr University outside of Seattle and the University of Minnesota in a human clinical trial that was funded by the National Institute of Health. As part of the trial, women who had undergone intensive treatments experienced decreased white blood cell numbers and natural killer cell activity. So the study group received between six and nine grams of turkey tail a day, and they had a rebound of immune activity after just two weeks of use. So considering that it typically takes a person nine months to an entire year for their natural killer cells and lymphocytes to rebound after intensive conventional treatments, this study shows how remarkable the immune modulation support that turkey tail can provide. The study used freeze-dried and concentrated host defense turkey tail, right? And the serving size was six to nine grams a day. This also comes in liquid extracts, right? And it's available for people who are having problems swallowing pills. And an additional benefit is that turkey tail is also now known to be a strong prebiotic. So it also may be re remodeling the intestinal terrain in a beneficial way when it's used. A mushroom formula that supports your whole body, this is for both women and men, would be Stamit 7. 
Uh, Stamet 7 is a formula of equal amounts of seven mushrooms. It's cordyceps, reishi, lion's mane, chaga, maitake, agaricus blasii, and mesema. So these seven mushrooms support balanced immune functioning, while they also support just about every other system in our body. The mushrooms, they're all supportive for lungs, liver, brain and nerves, blood glucose already within the normal range, our heart and cardiovascular system, essentially our whole body. And now we know from research that most, if not all of these species also support a healthy intestinal microbiome. So there's also strong preliminary research that suggests that the seven mushroom species together increase immune functioning stronger than the seven mushroom species when they're tested separately at the same amount. So in ethnobotanical traditions, formulas are often considered more than the sum of their parts. And it seems that this is also true with mushroom formulas. So Stamet 7, this is our daily immune support formula. It's available in capsules, powder, and as a liquid extract. Now for mushroom products that best support immune modulation, we have a number of different options. Our elderberry plus syrup, this is really three products in one to help support immediate immune function as well as upper respiratory wellness. One serving, which is two teaspoons, contains 100 milligrams of elderberry extract, 2000 milligrams of concentrated elderberry juice, and a gram of mushrooms, and that's equal parts reishi, turkey tail, and chaga. So both the extract and the juice concentrate have been found to support upper respiratory wellness, yet they both contain different compounds. So we've combined them both in order to provide this full spectrum of constituents. And then combining both of those elderberry products together and adding mushrooms definitely gives you a full range of support. The agaricon mushroom, th this is like the mascot of fungi perfecti and host defense mushrooms. It's been deeply researched and found to strongly engage the immune system as well as the modulatory functions of the immune system. So agaricon is a powerful support for maintaining a strong and balanced immune response all year long. Our MycoShield immune spray, this is five mushrooms in a spray formula. It's agaricon, reishi, chaga, birch polypore, and turkey tail with natural organic vegan flavors added. Uh, MycoShield is great for people who use public transportation or if you're a teacher or medical staff or part of retail staff. If you're interacting with the public and coming into contact with lots of people every day, you're the perfect person for MycoShield. There's five flavors to choose from. We suggest you use three to six sprays three to four times a day. And then our My Community. This is our most complex formula in the entire line. There's 17 mushrooms that engage a complex synergy of mycelial polysaccharides, mycelial immune complexes, and fermented rice polysaccharides and metabolites. So My Community strongly engages the immune response in a balanced manner. And that allows our bodies to fight harder when we really feel that we need it most. So host defense, we have a real wide variety of delivery methods available that is sure to entice just about anybody. Our capsules are convenient and concentrated. So this is a great option for long-term support. The powders are the same material that are in the capsules. They're really palatable. This is great for anybody who has problems swallowing pills, or who's experiencing what we call pill fatigue. You can add the powder to smoothies, water, any kind of drink really. You can sprinkle them on oatmeal uh, or other foods. They can even be used as a gluten-free soup or stew thickener. Our liquid extracts are complex solutions that include cold water extraction, hot water extraction, and alcohol extracts of mycelium, the fermented substrate, and in some of the liquids, fruiting body extract. They absorb rapidly and provide a more immediate immune modulation that is also a good option for folks who don't like to swallow pills. Our mycobotanicals teas, these include mycelium and fruit bodies as well as mycelial extracts and are combined with beneficial and tasty organic herbs. So the teas are an easy and tasty way to add mushrooms if you're already taking a lot of supplements or if you're new to mushrooms, right? Uh, teas are, it's a great place to start. And we have three varieties. There's the hibiscus and green tea. There's one called peaceful mint and turmeric immune. Now, how about adding some mushrooms along to your dessert? Uh, 
This is where our primordial chocolate bars come in, right? This may be the healthiest and tastiest way to eat chocolate. The bars are 100% organic and ethically derived ingredients. It includes 70% cacao dark chocolate. Each of the bars contains between five and eight grams of coconut sugar. That has a low glycemic index sugar. And each bar contains a full gram of mushrooms split equally between lion's mane, reishi, chaga, and cordyceps mycelium. And of course, cacao also contains things like theobromine and polyphenols, which have several beneficial health benefits themselves, including cardiovascular support. So Host Defense is more than just a supplement company making products for people, right? Our, our business is constantly attempting to find the mycelial response to many of the problems that we humans have created on our dear planet from microremediation of toxic soil to microfiltration of contaminated water to microagricultural support of deficient soils, and most recently, the support of bees in their battle against colony collapse disorder, varroa mite infestation, and viral infections. And so, you know, if all of the scientific research that we kind of breeze through here uh, isn't quite enough to convince you, there's another type of peer review that we have been receiving over the last number of years, and that's in the, in the form of awards which have come our way. And we're really excited about this. So Host Defense has received a number of awards for our mycobotanicals products. These are products that are a blend of mushrooms and herbs together to support specific body systems and health concerns. The Host Defense is consistently recognized for creating unique and effective products that work for you and the planet. So I want to thank you all so much for giving me a little bit of time. I really look forward to seeing you in future lectures. And now I'm going to look to see if there are any questions that you may have, and we'll get to answering them. So thank you so very much.